has been a while since I've done any videos on my home network so I just wanted to run through some changes I've made recently. Um, so my previous network setup I had two 10 gig edge switches, ubiquity edge switches and then I had two 8 pool um, power switches uh, with links split between each edge switch. Uh, so this was utilising spanning tree. Um, the edge switches don't really have any resiliency for IP addressing, uh, something like VRRP. Um, so I had to do all my uh, inter-VLAN routing on the firewall. Uh, it made it very, very secure. Um, but the trouble was I had to rely on the links uh, between the edge switches and the um, VMware hosts, uh, which had the virtual files rules running on. Um, I had to rely on that link. So I wanted to way I could actually do IP addressing on my core um, routers but have resiliency as well. Uh, so the edge switches were connected by a link aggregation um, link between the two uh, edge switches. Uh, this was running at 10 gig. Um, each VMware host had a 10 gig link to each 10 gig switch. So it gave uh, the resiliency and load balancing. Um, the two 8 port switches um, were um, using spanning tree, multiple spanning tree. Uh, so you have resiliency. Uh, only one of the, um, the links will work. One of the links will be blocked because of a spanning tree, but it gave a bit of resiliency. Um, so that wasn't too bad. Uh, my current setup I'm running now as I've actually employed two HP 2930s. Uh, now these are stackable and I've got one 24 port and one um, 8 port um, 2930 switch and it doesn't matter with these um, the configuration of the actual uh, switches like the um, their port counts or their uh, model or as long as they're 2930s uh, you can stack them. Um, you can either use the 1 gig ports or you can use 10 gig ports, it doesn't matter with VSF. Um, you decide what links you want to use. Um, so my, um, I've gone back to one single uh, 8 port power switch uh, which powers like um, an IP phone and various end devices and then I've got the um, 8 port 2930 in my bedroom because it's silent um, and I've got the 2930F24 port in my um, main comms room because it's very very noisy um, so the what I've had to do with the VMware hosts is because I've only got um, spare 10 gig links 10 gig ports on the 2024 port I've actually got one link from each uh, VMware host going to a 24 port at 10 gig and then a, another link running at 1 gig to the 8 port switch so it gives a bit of resiliency and it gives a little bit of load balancing um, the Palo Altos are still running on the VMware host got one on each they're still running active passive and they're still doing the routing for majority of my networks I haven't moved all my networks over to the um, to the 2930s yet uh, so gateways um, they are um, able to act as a uh, IP routing device uh, I, they support OSPF um, so I could probably um, set up an OSPF link and um, do some um, testing with that but at the moment I've just got static root um, I probably don't need OSPF to be honest um, it, it'll give more overhead than its advantages I'll probably end up just using static links uh, so the Palo Alto firewalls uh, they have linked to a VDSL router JDEC VDSL router and they have linked to the actual um, a 4G internet backup router so when I lose connectivity through the VDSL the Palo Alto firewalls will actually route all the traffic through the actual um, 4G uh, backup 
um, router, but it, it doesn't um, forward iTunes traffic. It doesn't send iTunes, allow iTunes, iTunes traffic through that um, backup router or um, Netflix or any streaming services because at the end of the day, if my main internet connection goes down, um, I don't want to be taking up my uh, 4G um, data allowance with iTunes and Netflix. It's not really that important. Um, I can lose those um, temporarily until my uh, VDSL link comes back up. Uh, so that utilizing the, um, the VSF, um, they act as one virtual switch and so I don't need to use spanning tree anymore I've just got one link from the 8 port um, HP 2530 to each switch um, so I don't have to use spanning tree it load balances the actual um, traffic because so I've used um, LACP um, as a link between the, the 24 port and the 8 port and the um, 8 gig switch um, so that, now that works very well uh, no spanning tree issues and of course because they act as one virtual switch um, I've got resiliency if I want to use it for um, inter VLAN routing so that's, um, that's my network setup at the moment um, I've just got to do a little bit of um, management now um, my 8 port switch here was recently rebooted and the AP is a ubiquity AP uh, but what I find handy to have is LLDP running on the AP um, so I know what port is plugged into onto the switch so uh, it's good for troubleshooting um, so let's have a look at my jump host uh, which gives me access to my um, network devices and see if we can enable that. So let's go on to the actual um, core switch. I've actually called this um, Homer, which is a uh, after the Simpsons character, of course, um, Homer Simpson. So again. This might take a while to log in, so in the meantime, I'll go on to the actual um, AP and I can enable the LLDP. So this is the one that's actually um, hasn't got a LDP enabled at the moment. So just wait for the switch to come up. There you go. So if I do a show, so it's show LLDP info remote just shortened. So you can see the only one you can see is the hall AP. I do know that the actual um, lounge AP is plugged into the um, into the virtual switch. Um, so let's see if I can enable the LLDP on here, and then we can see it. So there's many different switches you can use, many different um, options you can use. I'm just going to enable CDP, uh, very basic. It'll, at least it'll show where the uh, AP is plugged into. So that's enabled. So let's do another one. So you can see straight away we know where the device is. It's plugged into member 2, port 1. And the other AP that I've got, I've got two APs, uh, is plugged into member 1, port 1. So as before, you can see it wasn't showing up. And now you can, it, you can see it has showed up now. So I can show a little bit more information about the device. So if I do show LLDP and specify the port. 
it basically shows um, some basic information. It shows it's a um, wireless LAN access point. Uh, it does show it's a router. It does show it's a bridge. Uh, so it tells you what um, its description. And it shows you its um, MAC address. So that's um, just enabled LLDP. So I'll show you a little bit more about the actual um, VSF stack on the Homer now. So I'll do show VSF. That shows my um, 24 port, which I've selected as commander, and the 8 port switch, which I've selected as a standby. You see it's running at a chain uh, topology at the moment. Uh, this is because I've only got two devices. If you want to use it as a ring uh, topology, you need more than two devices, so three devices, so you can create a um, a uh, a ring. Uh, what whatever configuration you do on a VSF side, you can never get that to a ring if you've only got two devices. So if I show you the running config. I've actually got two. Um, two ports configured as VSF links on each switch. So I've got um, port, one t port 27 on member one and port 28 on member one. And on the uh, eight port switch, I've got interface nine and interface 10 running. And they're both, they're both using link one. So if I do a, um, a show interface support static decks, Port utilization, that's what it is. Da -da -da. Port utilization. There you go, that's better. So you can see that port um, 27 and port 28, they are near enough, um, well, they are exactly the same utilization. So you can see the, um, the port utilization, it's both the same. So the, um, the VSF links here, and the VSF links here. So I can go into my other 8 port switch and you can have a look on that. Just show you basic config on that one. So I can do a show LLDP on here. So you can see that um, I've got two ports here, which is showing up as um, Homer connected to the core switch. And here you can see I've got interface one slash interface eight on member one, and interface eight on member two. I've tried to keep it as um, consistent as possible. It hasn't always been possible, um, but I've tried to keep a bit of consistency there. So I can show a trunk on here. So 
So you can see I've got two trunks set up. So trunk 11 is going back to the uh, 8 port switch. And it's an LOCP trunk. Same on here. So I've actually named these. That, that coincides with here so you've got uh, port 8 on member 2 goes back to port 9 on nano switch power so I've see I've, I've basically just named them uh, so I can see on the actual um, where, where the connections are that just makes it troubleshooting it's always nice to name your um, interfaces on your switches it just it's so much it's such good practice um, and it enables you to find stuff very easily, very easy for troubleshooting. So um, I think that's more or less concluded uh, what I wanted to show you today. Um, the, uh, the new VSF um, network setup and the uh, bit of stuff on the ubiquity uh, for the LLDP enable so um, thanks for watching and I'll uh, do another video um, maybe a little bit quicker than I came out with this one thank you very much for watching